these alkaline phosphatases they help in removal of the terminal phosphate groups from 5 dash end these enzymes that is alkaline phosphatase as you can see here the dna fragment with 5 dash phosphate ends there may be a need so uh, what uh, means it should not self ligate when we introduce a cut in the vector there is a chance this vector may again rejoin by itself uh, by till the time you introduce your gene of interest there is a chance that this vector may rejoin itself so for that time you need to remove this phosphate groups so that it doesn't allow self annealing it is a process called as self annealing so you see here when the dna fragment with 5 dash ends are added with alkaline phosphatases it removes the phosphate groups it prevents the self annealing of vectors uh, vector dna soon after it is cut open by restriction enzymes okay so this is the important function of alkaline phosphatases that is it removes the uh, phosphate groups from the terminal end see this figure the plasmid is cut open and this dna ligase if it is added it can allow the recircularization of plasmid that is self ligation now we are using enzymes variety of enzymes at the same time and uh, same time one after another so on and so forth so here for a time being you need that this should not reanneal like this reannealing or self ligation should not happen so you add alkaline phosphatases which removes the phosphate as you can see to both the phosphate to pi is removed and you have oh oh at the end so no reaction is there no self annealing is there so once the foreign dna fragment is introduced and you introduce dna ligase then that is perfectly sealed and you have a clone that is sorry a chimera or a recombinant dna technology ready for cloning you introduce you can introduce it into a host so alkaline phosphatases nowadays they have become a very useful tool in molecular biology laboratories because no, dna normally it possesses phosphate at the two ends and it can self ligate so removing these phosphates which prevents the dna from ligating that is the 5 dash end is not allowed to attach to the 3 dash end and it keeps the dna molecule linear in a linear not circle what is opposite of a circular dna is a linear dna so it helps in keeping the dna molecule linear until the next step of the process which is to be used also removal of the phosphate allows radio labeling this is very important point to be noted that you can introduce your la radio labeled compounds here in most of the study we need to trace whether that uh, gene of interest is inserted or not we see it through radioisotopic studies x-ray crystallographic studies we study it on the gel electrophoresis and you need a uh, compound which is fluorescent or radioactive label in order to measure the presence of this dna you label it and through further steps in the process you can easily detect it so this is also helpful in these steps the last part of our discussion now is the dna modifying enzymes after alkaline phosphatases that is the third group now the fourth group there are nine enzymes here in dna modifying enzymes uh, that th that is nucleases polymerases and terminally acting enzymes depending upon their mode of action i already explained these in my first slide so these are the nine types of dna modifying enzymes which i will now run through it all these in great detail you will be studying at your postgraduate sessions or in those where you will be venturing into research into molecular laboratories if you get a chance to work in any molecular laboratories you will be handling these enzymes which come in small containers you will be utilizing micro pipettes taking out and so on and so forth so i will just introduce you in a very brief moment of time brief quantity of time i will introduce you all these nine enzymes which are a part and parcel of molecular cloning recombinant dna technology and genetic engineering the first is clenofragment it is actually a dna polymerase it is called as dna polymerase 1 because this dna polymerase is modified means you take a fully active wild type dna and modify its some uh, segments that is the protein length and design it to fit to your purpose so you can see this figure this dna polymerase this is a polymerase unit a complete e coli dna polymerase unit 
Now the 3 dash to 5 dash exonucleus unit is retained and this is the palm finger and the thumb the palm finger and thumb model which we have seen in the DNA replication. So that is enzymatically cleaved by a protease which is called as satellicin. Satellicin. This is the protein which is obtained from bacillus subtilis. A proteolytic enzyme. So your E. coli DNA polymerase 1 enzyme is cleaved. A large protein fragment is cleaved by the protease satellicin and this cleavage still retains the function of polymerase 1. It removes the polymerizing activity means the sum of the polymerase. It retains 5 dash to 3 dash polymerase activity is retained. This is polymer. Polymerase enzyme means what it does it adds polymers. Okay. It can add in 5 dash to 3 dash. It can uh, cut the DNA in 3 dash to 5 dash. It has a uh, three function enzyme this is. What are the three functions of DNA polymerase 1? First is 5 dash to 3 dash polymerase activity. 3 dash to 5 dash exonuclease activity and 5 dash to 3 dash exonuclease activity. When I am saying 5 dash to 3 dash polymerase activity, in short DNA damage, this enzyme can add nucleotides for filling the gaps in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. That activity is retained. This enzyme has another function that is it can cleave the DNA, it can cut the DNA from 3 dash to 5 dash activity okay, and from 5 dash to 3 dash activity. So these are the three functions. Now by enzymatically modifying you take a protease enzyme satellicin and you act on it that is a very specific enzyme which removes only that part of the DNA polymerase 1 where in 1970 this was first reported where 5 dash to 3 dash exo uh, polymerase activity is retained 5 dash to 3 dash you see the lighter here 5 dash to 3 dash activity is retained 3 dash to 5 dash exonuclease activity which is needed for proofreading and correction is retained only 5 dash to 3 dash exonuclease activity is lost okay so when you use this modified dna polymerase enzyme and add it on the dna the combination of this enzyme and the DNA product is called as clenofragment. Okay, it was first discovered by name is given on the basis of the scientist in 1970, cleno, clenofragment. Okay, other small fragments which are formed when DNA polymer is 1 is cleaved means it is only retaining two activities, 3 dash to 5 dash exonuclease, 5 dash to 3 dash polymerase activity and the product formed is called as Cleno or cleno fragment. The second enzyme is deoxyribonuclease 1 and deoxyribonuclease 2. Deoxyribonuclease 1 is usually called as DNAs 1. It is an endonuclease. Whenever I use the word nuclease, I mean cutting. There is a cutting and very specific type of cutting. Restriction endonuclease we have seen. This is a class of nuclease which is not restriction endonuclease but a DNAs, nuclease itself, endonuclease and it uh, is coded by the human gene DNAs1 actually in uh, in our system but DNAs1 is a nucleus which cleaves DNA preferably at a phosphodiester linkage adjacent to a pyrimidine nucleotide and DNAs1 has a different type of cut DNAs2 has a different type of cut means at the o OHP that is a phosphodiester linkage there is PO bonds are there either here or here means at one point this phosphate group retain is retained on which base that is determining DNAs 1 and 2. I will show you the figure in the next slide. This yields a 5 dash phospho phosphate bond containing nucleotide. So polynucleotide or mononucleotides. It acts on single stranded DNA as well as double stranded DNA. See the figure here. This is a DNA strand, two adjacent nucleotides I have given adenine and guanine. Okay, so this is adenine and guanine. So you can see the green DNA is one is making a cut here. So both this adjacent they are bound here, here exactly at the point where I have placed the red cursor, there is a phosphate bond. This phosphate bond is this here. 
now this phosphate bond depending upon the cut you see dna is one is making a cut here so this adenine is not going to contain the phosphate but guanine will contain the phosphate at its five dash end but if specifically the cut is made on the other side then at the three dash hydroxyl end there will be a phosphate retained see the beauty of this dna is this one and two enzymes one is more popularly used one is the one which makes a cut here so you can see adenine is a base which has retains its natural phosphate at the five dash end at the three dash end there is a hydroxyl group normal and the second product which is formed is a guanine which has a phosphate at the five dash as well as three dash end both now come back here see the cut created by dns2 it is on the other side of the phosphate so what happens here the phosphate is retained on the adenine if there is an enzyme dns2 using cut so adenine now will have phosphate at the 3 dash end as well as the 5 dash end whereas guanine will have no phosphate at the 3 dash end it is retained here whereas there is no phosphate at the 5 dash end so this is the specific type of uh, enzyme which allows you to keep the phosphate at the one of the nucleotide so there may be a situation in the recombinant DNA technology where you need to introduce phosphates at specific nucleotides. This enzyme helps in that process. Now the third enzyme is S1P1 nucleases or the S1 nucleases. These are again endonuclease enzymes which splits the single stranded DNA and RNA into oligo or mononucleotides. So you can see here this is a nucleobase, this is a base and it is joined by a phosphodiester bond and you can see the dots which I have shown here is the different nucleotides, all nucleotides here. So once this only one of the two dots I have glorified here to show you the cut is introduced in the phosphate, a phosphate bond is S1 nuclease okay splits the single stranded dna and this enzyme catalyzes the reaction means 5 phospho mononucleotide and 5 phospho oligonucleotide products this is a 5 phospho mononucleotide and the 5 phospho oligonucleotides can also be produced a long strand of dna is cut a phosphodiester bond is broken and it can generate this is again restriction endonuclease only it is a class of nucleases only Nucleases is a big group of enzymes in which restriction endonuclease 4 classes are there and rest of these enzymes which are the DNA modifying enzymes are also present. So although it is primarily uh, acting on a substrate of single stranded DNA it can also occasionally act on double stranded DNA introducing double stranded breaks. It can act on a DNA RNA hybrid it can act on but DNA is needed DNA it can act on RNA also it can act on DNA RNA hybrids also this enzyme hydrolyzes the single stranded DNA and uh, even at loops and gaps you see stem and loop configuration is there so a loop is formed there also this en enzyme can act because in a loop what is there this uh, DNA is not joined by hydrogen bonds so inside a loop also it can introduce a nick it has no sequence specificity this is a host defense mechanism enzyme at any base which is not a single stranded or a loop like region it can start introducing cuts s1 nucleases are usually found in aspergillus oryzae and p1 nucleases that is also which generates the phosphate bonds it is p1 is a zinc uh, molecule containing having the same function p1 nucleases is found in penicillium citrinum P1 nuclease is a zinc dependent single strand specific nucleus which hydrolyzes phosphodiester bonds in RNA and single stranded DNA with no base specificity. No specificity is needed. Fourth enzyme is BAL31. This BAL31 enzyme has a exonuclease activity that is it has a 3 dash to 5 dash exonuclease activity as well as 5 dash to 3 dash exonuclease activity but one important aspect of this exonuclease activity that is the degrading capacity of the enzyme is that 3 dash to 5 dash you see here in the figure 3 dash to 5 dash if it is degrading from here and 5 dash to 3 dash on this strand 5 dash to 3 dash if it is degrading from here these activities are specific 3 dash to 5 dash exonuclease activity of BAL31 enzyme 
is it acts on three dash end of a sticky end degrading it into mononucleotides means the end result it will be sticky end to blunt end sometimes it is needed you can see you started the starting material is a sticky end and the end result is by using ball 31 you have a blunt end and from the two ends the deoxyribonucleotide monophosphates are released that is mononucleotides are cut down so the function of this ball 31 enzyme is to act from 3 dash to 5 dash cutting the single strands 5 dash to 3 dash also it acts but it acts on double stranded dna endonuclease activity of ball 31 is that it degrades the single stranded dna slowly and cleaves the supercoil double stranded dna generating in from flush ends to blunt ends it can also act on mutagenically altered dna segments means the, the starting material can be a flush end a flush end with a protruding 5 dash end or a flush end with a protruding 3 dash end or it can act on blunt ends it can act on cut dna as you can see it is a double stranded dna only without a phosphate bond it can act on single stranded dna from both ends also so this is a very important enzyme in the molecular cloning ball 31 it is a bidirectionally acting enzyme it can act from both sides very unique it is active even on simple nicks like this and it can act on double stranded dna double stranded rna single stranded dna whatever which contains a 3 dash hydroxyl end or a 5 dash phosphate end it can start acting and it can come to a point where it can generate blunt end dna it creates blunt end dna the fifth category is exonuclease 3 third uh, third class of uh, exonuclease it is called as exonuclease 3 or exo3 and it is an enzyme which belongs to the exonuclease family exo3 it catalyzes a stepward removal of mononucleotides from 3 dash hydroxyl end of a double stranded dna as you can see this is a double stranded nucleotide starting material can be anything like this a blunt end with a 5 dash protruding or blunt end short DNA sequences or a nicked DNA starting material can be anything so we start with this in the middle that is a double stranded DNA exonuclease if you can see 3 dash end from this point 3 dash end from here and 3 dash from end here it generates uh, stepwise removal of mononucleotides from 3 dash hydroxyl termini of the double stranded DNA limited number of nucleotides are removed means just like you sharpen a pencil you don't keep on sharpening the whole pencil you remove a limited amount of food from the pencil so like this limited number of nucleotides are removed during each binding event and this results in a coordinated progressive deletion of the uh, dna molecules and this can be a perfect tool for insertion or ligation or whatever the situation of the molecular cloning may demand this function of this exo3 nuclease is used to produce a unidirectional deletion from a linear molecule means one-sided deletions if you are expecting you can use these enzymes and uh, it uh, generates a one sticky end and a one sticky and blunt end dna okay either it can generate a one blunt end dna or one single stranded sticky end dna so it is a very important enzyme used in the recombinant dna technology now again reverse transcriptase a wonder molecule which has the capacity of creating a dna from the rna so reverse transcriptase is an enzyme which is used to generate complementary dna cdna from rna template that is a process termed as reverse transcription as you can see here the starting material is rna then if you incubate it with some oligo deoxyribonucleotide primers the complementary to this mrna and you incubate it with a reverse transcriptase enzyme then a complementary dna is synthesized on this you can use the reverse transcriptase enzyme and when cdna is a dna is uh, synthesized hydrolyze this mrna and now add dna polymerase the regular dna polymerase now here there is a loop because this is a single strand you generate a loop which acts as a primer cut this using another enzyme s1 nucleus which uh, is one more type of tool so you cut this and then extend that 
you get a double stranded DC, uh, C DNA. You it all started with the RNA and you have a complementary double stranded DNA. So this is a wonderful event which can be used in recombinant DNA technology or molecular uh, biology cloning for generating a gene of interest. If you have a map ready, you can create a gene of interest itself. A very tedious process, not as simple as I orally say here, but it is one of the process. So reverse transcriptase is used uh, or procured from certain enzymes like uh, HIV virus and hepatitis by B virus for replication they use these enzymes and that has been used extensively as a tool in molecular biology. It is also present in eukaryotic cells to extend the telomeres at the end of the linear chromosomes. Okay, so that is how our memory uh, when we think in old age we remember old things but we forget the very recent events and that is due to this telomere processing event which is taking place and reverse transcriptase has a role in that and then anyway we are you discussing the use of reverse transcriptase here as a tool used in molecular cloning so this reverse transcriptase is commonly used in research to apply for pcr okay polymerase chain reaction and the classical pcr we will deal whenever we'll see pcr as a tool for molecular cloning i'll explain in great detail about the reverse transcriptase and thermos aquaticus polymerase stack polymerase there it is commercially available and along with other enzymes this has today become a very important tool in molecular cloning the seventh enzyme is polynucleotide kinase it is a simple enzyme which introduces a phosphate group as the at the phi dash end very simple enzyme called as T4 because it is obtained from uh, the phage bacteriophage T4. It can be used to label the phi dash end of a double stranded DNA, means a phosphate group can be introduced. This enzyme belongs to the class transferases, specifically those which can transfer the phosphate group. The systematic name of this enzyme is ATP 5 D phospho polynucleotide 5 prime phosphotransferases i repeat atp d phospho polynucleotide 5 dash phosphotransferases enzyme and it has a capacity to catalyze a double stranded dna that is a 5 d d phospho dna this is a d phospho dna to a phospho dna d phospho atp dna to a 5 phospho adp dna that is one atp molecule is required here it is obtained from T7 bacteriophage or T4 bacteriophage or T7 bacteriophage and it catalyzes the transfer of gamma phosphate from ATP. From ATP the gamma phosphate is transferred to the free hydroxyl end of the phi dash end of the DNA or the RNA. The resulting product here can be used to end label the DNA or RNA in ligation reactions. Even you can add a radioactive labeled phosphate here which becomes a very important tool. The eighth enzyme is terminal transferases, a very beautiful enzyme which can create a cohesive ends from blunt ends. As you can see here, this is a DNA to be cloned. Terminal deoxytransferases, also known as TDT, also known as DNA nucleotidyl transferases, that is DNTT, or also known as simply terminal transferase. It is a specific DNA polymerase which adds nucleotides at the terminal end. Terminal transferase it is a template dependent enzyme means a dna template here is needed and at the terminal end you can go on adding mononucleotides so it, it generates protruding ends or blunt ends or cohesive ends of a dna uh, from the blunt ends blunt ends can be converted into cohesive ends or sticky ends this terminal transferase as you can see here terminal transferase adenine you can add adenine Terminal transferase thymine, that is th thymidine terminal transferases can add thymine, adenine terminal transferases can add adenine, you can add, there are four types, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, type of terminal transferases which can be added at one end, so this can be used to generate a cohesive or a sticky end and a molecule can be joined, otherwise it is very difficult to join a blunt end DNA. It, has, it can be converted into cohesive and DNA and then joined using terminal transferases. So this is called as tailing, tail, addition of a tail, a polymeric tail, mononucleotide polymer tail. 
ओके एडिशन ऑफ होमोपोलिमर टेल्स टू डी एन ए फ्रैगमेंट एंड दिस कैन बी लेबल्ड ऑल्सो रेड एक्टिव लेबल्ड मॉलिक्यूल्स कैन बी यूज लेटर ऑन टू डिटेक्ट वेदर दिस रिकॉमेंडेड डी एन ए मॉलिक्यूल रियली इज एग्जिस्टिंग और नॉट ओके लेबलिंग ऑफ डबल और सिंगल स्टैंडर्ड डी एन ए मॉलिक्यूल्स आइदर विथ रेडियो एक्टिव डी एन ए और केमिकली मॉडिफाइड डी एन ए इज वन ऑफ द प्राइम इवेंट्स विच कैन बी कैरिड आउट बाई टर्मिनल ट्रांसफरेजेस एंड द लास्ट एंजाइम इज थर्मस एक्वाटिकस पॉलीमरेज दिस विल बी मैंशनड इन और यूज इन ग्रेट डिटेल इन पी सी आर टूडे यू नो अबाउट पॉलीमरेज चेन रिएक्शन द पी सी आर आर टी पी सी आर रियल टाइम पी सी आर विच इज यूज फॉर डिटेक्शन ऑफ करोना वायरस इन द कोविड पेशेंट्स सिमिलरली इन रिकॉमेंडेड डी एन ए टेक्नोलॉजी वेरियस इवेंट्स आर देयर वेर यू नीड टू मैग्निफाई अ जीन ऑफ इंटरेस्ट टू ग्रेट अमाउंट्स देयर टैक पॉलीमरेज द एसेंस और द ब्यूटी ऑफ टैक पॉलीमरेज इज यू सी दिस इज द हैबिटैट इट इज अ थर्मल स्प्रिंग इन वेस्ट इट इज अ थर्मल स्प्रिंग एंड हियर द थर्मस एक्वाटिकस स्पीसीज दे थ्राइव luxuriantly they grow from there if you isolate from these organisms if you isolate its normal dna polymerase this normal dna polymerase can extend that is polymerase which can extend replicate the dna at 72 degree centigrade and this has a great use in rt pcr i'll explain that in future lecture whenever it may come but this tag polymerase is a thermostable dna polymerase named after the thermophilic u bacteria a uh, microorganism that is thermus aquaticus and it was originally isolated by chin uh, chain et al in 1976 its name is abbreviated at tac tac polymerase with thermus aquaticus okay uh, and it has a great ability to amplify short segments of dna to thousands and millions of copies at 72 degree centigrade so uh lowering the temperature increasing the temperature using two different dna polymerase is the principle of rt pcr okay and uh, this originally rt pcr was done with e coli polymerase but later on now today you cannot imagine a polymerase chain reaction or a pcr mechanism without tag polymerase so these are important tools used in the recombinant dna technology just a overview of the enzymes if you see the list of enzymes as you can see bal 31 which is acting at the termini exo both ends of the termini exo 3 acts at single end of the termini three, uh, terminus 3 dash hydroxyl end dna is one as you can see introduces cuts on the double stranded dna alkaline phosphatases are there polynucleotide kinase is there terminal di deoxy nucleotidyl transferase is there then this one single event which we saw just right now when i was mentioning reverse transcriptase if you see this single event of reverse transcriptase converting a single stranded dna to double stranded dna utilizes 1 2 3 and 4 enzymes that is reverse transcriptase itself then the dna polymerase enzyme to synthesize the double stranded dna from single stranded dna then s1 nuclease to cut the dna here then the terminal transferase to generate the terminal end molecules so you can see one single event may require multiple amount of tools and these enzymes are the very important tools used in recombinant dna technology having said that i stop here and end my lecture i request you to ruminate on these enzymes think on these enzymes again and again and see the beauty of the processes which they are uh capable of carrying out and think about the human endeavor the human mind which has bought all these enzymes in separate test tubes if you are a molecular biology biologist you will be having a rack of test tubes in which all these enzymes will be there you will be using molecular uh, micro pipettes in the molecular biology lab and carry out in instruction uh, in, in introduction of these segments cutting splicing ligating creation of chimeras creation of molecular clones that is the beauty of this whole process as we move on to our next lecture we will see the tools used in molecular cloning again i request you to go through the Uh, links which i have given at the bottom of this video which will help you in taking down the notes in the end in a very uh, 
short video i would like to show the action of uh, some enzymes restriction enzymes and some enzymes in a one minute video which follows at the end of this video for explaining how the molecular cloning takes place so in my next lecture i will be discussing vectors which is the next tool for recombinant dna technology till that time enjoy the animation which follows and dear friends please enjoy the recombinant dna technology process also i wish you go to the next level of understanding with revisiting these videos whenever you find a doubt go to my earlier videos or the easiest way approach me we can have a very good discussion in the laboratory about these techniques so all the best happy learning